Welcome. Uh, this is A Level Buddhism, and uh, this is the background to Buddhism in India, uh, Unit Two or Lesson Two. And today, in this video, we're looking at key vocabulary. The first word is Brahmanism. Uh, Brahmanism is the complex religion, a sacrificial religion that emerged in the post-Vedic society about 900 BCE, under the influence of the dominant priesthood or Brahmins. An early stage in the development of what we could today call Hinduism. Reincarnation. Reincarnation is the philosophical or religious concept that each living being starts life in a new physical body, but you are not just your physical body. After each biological death, the soul or the Atman transmigrates, it's reborn, rebirthed. And this is part of the doctrine of samsara. It's a cyclical or existence of life, death, and rebirth. And it's the major tenet of all major religions in India, including Buddhism, Hinduism, Jainism, and Sikhism. Next, uh, well, this word, Krishitheria, means a noble or a warrior. It was part of the caste system in India. Uh, the second high, highest ruling uh, level or varna uh, underneath the Krishathras were, were the, uh, the the merchant traders or Vaishyas and above them was the Brahmin priests. Now movements of individuals up and down the castes was both possible and not uncommon. Uh, a rise in, in fact a rise in rank to Krishathra could be a reward for outstanding service to the rulers of the day like knights getting um, knighted for their uh, valor. Now there are interesting legends to do with the struggles between the different castes. One, in one legend, uh, Vishnu destroys the, the, the ruling caste of the day, Krishathas, um, as punishment for their tyranny. Now this might reflect an older struggle between, of, for supremacy between priests and rulers. Uh, think Catholic uh, Europe, as it were. Brahmanic texts such as the Manu Smriti and other books of of law report uh, the Brahman victory over the Krishathras. But epic texts often offer a diff different account. And it's likely that in social reality, uh, rulers have usually ranked first, even if the text say something different. Uh, this is supported, yeah, this class is supported because the deities, Vishnu, Krishna, Ram and so on, are, are described as rulers. It underscores the point that in fact the people who really rule society are not the priests but perhaps the uh, Krishathas. Uh, and it's the, the buttress of the image is of the ruler is as the preserver of law or Dharma and of auspicious wealth. In modern times, uh, Krishartha Varna includes a broad cast, uh, class of uh, groups of people today uh, with different social functions, but united in being the ruling class who pursue war or seek to possess land. The Indus Valley Society, the Indus Valley Society was the prehistory almost society, uh, ancient Indus Valley civilization, one of the earliest in the world uh, perhaps earlier than Mesopotamia, i.e. Babylonia, and even Egypt. Famous for its large and well-planned cities, over a thousand settlements were found, most of these small, but among them are some of the largest cities of their time, especially Harappa and Mohenjo daro Prior, if you look back in history, way big history, 6,500 BCE, the Indian subcontinent was home of hunter-gatherers, much like the rest of the world. Um, and this, by the fourth millennium BCE, we have moving into farming communities that would have dotted the floodplains up and down the river India, Indus, in the northwest of India, Pakistan. And from about the fourth millennium, these urban settlements started appearing, uh, coalescing with shared traits uh, that would later appear in the Indus Valley cities. Rigid city planning, massive brick walls, bull motifs in their arts, 
seals and language, all kinds of things. Around 2600 BCE, we find a fully mature Indus Valley civilization. Its religion is impossible to re reconstruct. We just don't have enough evidence. But there are intriguing indications of continuity between the religion of this civilization and the later religions of ancient India. Some Indus Valley seals show swastikas, as in found in Hinduism and its offshoots, Buddhism and Jainism. Many of the seals show how animals presented uh, represent perhaps later Hindu gods such as Shiva and Indra. Large numbers of these uh, figurines have been found in the Indus Valley have led some scholars to, to describe the Indus religion as fertility uh, religion, a mother goddess worshipping uh, religion that would lead to um, uh, the more recent uh, Shakti, worship of mother goddess. All these practices point to the Indus Valley religion having a large measure of influence on the beliefs and practices, not only of that region, but of the Aryan or Indo-European people who came after them. The Vedic society was what followed the period of the writing of the Vedas, the earliest books in Indian history, about 1500 to 1200 BCE. The Indo European or Aryan settled in northern India, bringing with them this wider range of religious traditions and gods, and started to influence the Ganges Basin or Plain. It was shaped by increasingly an emphasis on agriculture and not looking after herds of animals. A hierarchy of social classes or the caste system and the emergence of not republics but uh, monarchical state level politics. Scholars consider the Vedic society to have been a composition of Indo Aryan and Harpurian cultures. So, this uh, mix of these two influences. The Shramana movement okay, is going to be uh, the religious people who challenged the Vedic religion of Brahmanism. It was a, a collection of, of religious beliefs that included uh, school, four main schools of thought. The Jains, the Ajavakas, the materialists, and the skeptics. The Jains, who, unlike uh, the Brahmins, uh, thought the Atman was not part of the universal Brahman. Um, they practiced ascetic techniques, they emphasize non-violence, and they even even to the extent of killing an insect would have been thought to create bad karma. Ajakvakas believed, were a sect that believed around the time of the Buddha in a couple of hundred years before him that we have no ability to affect our own destiny. They also practiced extreme asceticism hoping to get uh, their last rebirth. The materialists also thought of life well, thought of life in a pessimistic way. They were a group that thought there was no life after death um, and there was no point in moral actions. Skeptics, also pessimistic. Um, they criticized every belief system, but they didn't really have one of their own. What is the Sangha? The Sangha is the word that just means community. But Buddhists take the word to mean two different things. Uh, for Mahayana Buddhists, more recent Buddhists, it donates just the idea of the ideal of the community of Buddhists together, lay and ordained, who have achieved a certain level perhaps of progress where they realize what the fetters or the three fetters are in life. However, more commonly or classically in Theravada Buddhism, it particularly refers just to the monastic, the Buddhist monastic order of monks and nuns and novices. The Sangha is that community thus of referred to the, of the bhikkhu or Sangha or the kuni Sangha. Um, the priest or monk order. Sangha, according to Theravada, uh, is one of the three jewels of Buddhism, uh, along with the Buddha and the Dharma. Uh, and it helps us overcome the temptations and vicissitudes of life in this, because we're in the safest possible environment for advancing towards enlightenment and liberation. Moving on to the extension words. Uh, the Sakya tribe was a clan 
of the Vedic period, so emerging in the 1750 BCE through to 500 BCE. It is the Buddha's own family background, as it were. The name Sakya is from a Sanskrit word, which means one who is capable. They formed a, an independent republic state known as Sakya Ganajavara. The Sakya capital was Kapilavastu, uh, which many have located either in uh, Tilarakot, Nepal, or in mm, Pipra, India. The best known Sakya, of course, is Siddhartha Sakya. Uh, who is the founder of Buddhism, and also known as Gautama of Buddha. The Siddhartha was the son of so Sodhodana. Sodhodana was the elected leader of the Shakya Republic. So his dad was pretty important. And Gautama Buddha founded, as we know, the Buddhism religion. But he abdicated the throne, so lineage continued with his son Rahula. Kosala was an ancient Indian kingdom corresponding with roughly the area in the region of Adwa today, pre present day Uttar Pradesh. It emerged as a small state during the Vedic period, and according to uh, Buddhist texts, uh, Kosala was one of 16 major realms, powerful realms, or in, in Hindi, uh, Mahajana Padas. In the 6th and 5th century BC, its cultural and political strength earned it great status and power. However, eventually, in the 4th century, it be weakened by its neighboring kingdom, Magadha, and was absorbed by it into one great kingdom. Magadha, its na the neighboring kingdom, uh, again one of the 16 Mahajana Padas, or great countries of India, uh, was the core kingdom in the area and the, of uh, Bihar in the south of the Ganges. It was the first capital was uh, Ranjagra, modern Rajgir, and then Pandalaputra, modern Panta. Uh, Magda expanded uh, the conquest of the surrounding kingdoms, uh, especially Kosala, and the ancient kingdom of Magda is, is heavily mentioned in both Jain and Buddhist texts. It's mentioned in the Ramayana, the Maharabhata, the Puranas. The state of Magadha, possibly originally a, a tribal kingdom, is recorded in Vedic texts much earlier than 600 BC. Back to the, back to the uh, caste system, the merchant caste, the Vaya Vaisha is one of the four castes of Hindu social order in ancient Nepal and India. Third highest of the four Varnas under the Hindu in the Hindu tradition, sometimes described as the commoners, the, the Vaisha share with the two higher classes, i.e. the Brahmins and the authoritative Krishathias, the distinction of being a, a Divija or a twice born, meaning you've 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 had your spiritual rebirth um, and you can take the sacred wool thread of the Upayana ceremony. The Vaishyas are accredited in history with favoring the rise of reformist beliefs of Buddhism and Jainism. Well, that's interesting. The Sudra then is the fourth and lowest of the traditional Varnas or social castes in India. Traditionally artisans or better laborers the term does not appear in the earliest Vedic literature, um, unlike the members of the three twice-born castes, uh, the Vijaya castes, the Arvarnas, Brahmins and Krishnas and Vaishyas, Sudras are not permitted to perform the sacred thread ceremony, the Upayana, the initiatory rite to study the Vedas. The Sudra Varna includes a wide spectrum of of different groups with different amounts of uh, power or legitimacy from landowning groups at one end of the scale all the way to untouchables at the other. The variations of the Sudra derive from the belief that certain behavior patterns and occupations are polluting, a concept that gave rise to a distinction between clean and unclean Sudra groups. For example, washers, tanners, shoemakers, sweepers and scavengers, 
were relegated to the status of untouchable. As evidence of the group mobility in the caste system, some observers have pointed out that the caste claiming Kishia and Vaishya status gradually emerged from the Sudra caste. Maybe. Animism. Animism is the attribute of having a living soul and ascribing that perhaps to plants, inanimate objects, even natural phenomena. Behind it, a belief in the supernatural power or realm of powers that organizes and animates the material universe. Within Hinduism, the belief is that the veneer of Hindu religion behind it is an ancient animistic uh, vein that runs strong. Animists in the worldview that non-human entities such as animals and plants possess a spiritual essence that animates them. Um, within the anthropology of religion, this, this is a term for a belief system uh, that is indicative of, of indigenous tribal peoples prior to the development of organized religion. Although each culture has its own different mythologies and rituals, animism is said to describe the most common foundational thread of indigenous peoples, spiritual or supernatural perspectives. Animistic perspective is so fundamentally mundane uh, every day, it's taken for granted. Uh, now, the Ganges Basin was that area where Buddhism emerged in, where these clashing kingdoms of Kosala and Magdala emerged following the Vedic period. Um, and there's lots of particular uh, geographical information we could say about it. Lingam Yoni. Uh, a yoni is literally the word for womb or vagina. Uh, it's the symbol of female goddess Shakti or Devi in Hinduism within Shivaism. It's the sect dedicated to the god Shiva. The yoni symbolizes his consort. Uh, the male counterpart of the yoni is the lingam, and their union together represents the eternal process of creation and regeneration. Um, some of these have been found in ancient uh, Indus Valley religion. The lingam literally means sign, symbol, or better, phallus. It's an abstract representation of the Hindu deity Shiva. It's used in many temples for worship and small, small shrines. Um, and the lingam is seen as a symbol of energy or potential, the very power or potential of Shiva himself. Vedas. Vedas is the large body of texts originating in ancient India, uh, written in Vedic Sanskrit. The texts uh, constitute the oldest layer of Sanskrit literature and the scriptures of Hinduism. Hindus consider the Vedas to be uh, not of man or s superhuman and having impersonal uh, and being authorless. The Vedas are called uh, Shruti, or what is heard, literature. Distinguish it from later religious texts, which are called Smriti, or what is remembered. Uh, the Veda for Orthodox Indian theologians considered revelations by ancient sages after intense, perhaps, meditation. The texts have been more carefully preserved since ancient times. The Maharabhata, the creation of the Vedas, is created is credited to Brahman. The Vedic hymns themselves assert they were skillfully created by rishis or sages after being inspired creatively. Just as in, in the analogy, just as a carpenter builds a chariot. There are four Vedas, the Rig Veda, the Yara Veda, the Sama Veda, and the Artha Veda. And they correspond to aspects, parts of the Indus Valley originally. Ascetics and asceticism is the literally means exercise or training. It's the lifestyle characterized by abstinence from worldly pleasures for the purpose of pursuing spiritual goals. Ascetics may withdraw from the world or their practices or continue to be part of their society, but typically adopt a frugal lifestyle characterized by the renunciation of material possessions and physical pleasures. And the time spent fasting while concentrating on the practice of religion and reflecting upon spiritual matters. It's been practiced in most of the world's religions, Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism. Karma, lastly, means action, word, or deed. Uh, it's the spiritual principle of cause and effect, uh, that your present actions affect your future reincarnated self. 
good action and good indeed will contribute to good karma and future happiness and bad intent and bad deed contribute to bad karma and future suffering. Karma is related to the you know, rebirth in you know, the idea of samsara in Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, Sikhism, Taoism. Well done.